Welcome to Dad, Mom, Tolkien. Tonight's story is from the incredible mind of MWMN19 over on Reddit No Sleep. And as ever, please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's story. Entitled I talked to an old merc at the bar. He had an interesting story to tell. Let's get straight into that. So, what's your story? I asked a man seated beside me. They chatter and laughing around us as everyone is either celebrating something or drowning their sorrows in alcohol. The smell of burning tobacco is prevalent. Well, as for myself, I just needed a drink. And the local bar was the best option for a cheap drink. When a bearded middle-aged man turned to me and looked disinterested, he takes a sip of his whiskey. I came here for a drink, not chit-chat. His gravelly voice replied as he turned his gaze back, now looking more melancholic than a few moments before. I don't know. I just need something else to get my mind off of. Life. You know. The man looks at me again and clears his throat. Well then, give me a ciggy and I'll tell you something of a story. I obliged, retrieving a cigarette from my pack. And once I did, he lit it up and took a long drag and then exhaled. Before I begin, I must tell you some background. I was in the military, served a couple of tours in Iraq back in the day. And after a <coughs> dishonorable discharge, I managed to get myself into a similar profession. He said. What do you mean, similar? Mercenary work. I did the dirty work for the government still, but indirectly. The pay was better. He took another drag of the ciggy and sip of his whiskey. I won't bore you with the humble beginnings of my life as a muck. The company is irrelevant. I quit after one particular job ten years ago. I couldn't blame you. Even a toughest sometimes crack. My granddad also served back in a day. He wasn't the same man when he came back. Or so I'm told. For me, he was always like that. I said, recollecting my late grandfather and his less than pleasant episodes. Yeah, it's fucked. Hey you, get me another one. Same thing. He told the barman, who quickly poured him another glass. Let me continue. The beginning of my end of my career came when I got a job to protect some big shot investor. Well, not the person as much as the location. The place he invested in. For what purpose is beyond me. All I know is that it looked like some archaeological site or some sort of mine. I don't know. I couldn't give two fucks at the time. I was only looking to get paid, so I didn't pay much attention to what was going on. It's better to be ignorant of those things. Information kills. Now, the job wasn't too hard. Just keep an eye on the surroundings and make sure no one except those with the right clearance enter. I was on the day shift. I did my patrol that night. And so I was getting some well-deserved rest in that cramped fucking room that they gave us. God fucking damn it! Don't you fucking know how to play poker for God's sake? I heard those two idiots quarreling again. Can't close my eyes for shit when those two are up and at it all the damn time. Could you two shut the fuck up? People are trying to get some shut eye here. I yelled. I heard no response. I think they got the message. I laid back down and closed my eyes, trying to make my mind blank so I drift into slumber quicker. Then I heard a distant rumbling sound. Not like that of an engine, but it sounded familiar nonetheless. The sound quickly got closer and closer, and I could feel the bunk bed start to shake slightly. And then I knew what was happening. I quickly got up. Earthquake! I shouted. Not a moment later, everything around me started shaking. 
I could barely stand on my feet. The floor felt like it was made of jelly instead of a solid surface. Things started falling to the ground. Pieces of the ceiling started crumbling down. It lasted for only a few seconds, but it felt like an eternity. Once everything settled down, I looked around. There was a large crack going up from the wall to the ceiling above. And the buildings haven't been designed for quakes. Hell, I'm pretty sure this area isn't prone to them. My lucky asses might have experienced a once in a millennia shake. I quickly dressed and went outside. I felt like the whole building could collapse on top of me at a moment's notice, especially if an aftershock hit. What the fuck was that? Are we under attack? I heard someone yell the moment I got outside. I'm pretty sure it was a quake, I said. Looks like you ain't from California, my dude, someone added. Fuck you, Jared, the first guy replied. That's that, or some sort of new fucking weapon. Her Tesla made some kind of device that could crumble buildings, someone else added. Everyone was outside and started giving their theories and whatnot, asking if anyone is hurt, etc. The damage seemed to be bad, but we couldn't do anything at the moment. We were awaiting orders on how to proceed. Thankfully, no one was seriously hurt during the quake. A few bruises here and there. Some unfortunate bastards fell from the top of the bunk bed, but were otherwise fine. So, it's not the horrors of war, but a quake? I said, lowering my glass. No, let me finish. After we were shaken up, we finally got in contact with the police we were protecting. They told us they were fine. Well, they weren't fine. Not even half an hour later, we see a dozen trucks getting the fuck out of there. All the manpower for whatever they were doing was gone, just like that. So... They just left. So what did you guys do next? I said. Well, we still had orders, though they were now modified. Hold the position and keep an eye on anything suspicious, with the addition of anything that was quick, whatever they meant by that. We also had a couple of guys that were needed closer to the site, to overlook the site itself. I didn't understand. They already had a separate security force there. They did say they would pay us an extra for the inconvenience. But still, what the fuck happened to those guys? Hmm. What did the place look like? I asked. Nothing special. A few buildings that were fenced off. Looked expensive. And they were in a much better shape than the little barracks we had back there. Well, some kind of research, I assume. Where was this even? You didn't tell me, I said. Somewhere in bumfuck middle of nowhere in northern Canada. Canada? Well, I took the job because it paid well and was easy, or so I thought. The worst thing that can attack us is a moose or a pack of wild geese and maybe a bear. Anyways, I digress. Hey, Clarence, I said in a hushed tone. We were alone, but it felt as if I needed to be quiet. And there was a dead silence as we patrolled the perimeter. No wind, no birds, nothing. Yeah, he replied. He replied. You think there's, there's something fishy about this place? This job as a whole, I said. Well, I've seen weird shit before. Well, it's best not to ask too many questions. I had a fuck with your head. He said, Yeah, I know, but this whole thing is weird. Even a damn earthquake. It didn't seem natural, I said. Ah, don't tell me you believe that conspiracy nut. Ah, what was his name? Pete? Ah, never mind. Yeah, I agree. Well, that's weird. And an earthquake isn't impossible to happen here. We just got unlucky. I'm not a geologist or whatever, but... I don't think these guys are responsible for it, he said, pointing towards the general direction of the small complex we were patrolling. Then we heard some shuffling in the bushes next to us. We raised our weapons in the direction of the sound. We have a potential threat northeast of the complex, 
Clarence said into his radio. Copy that. Update as soon as possible. I heard the reply. We slowly approached the bushes. Our rifles up, our fingers on the trigger. When we came closer, Clarence parted the bush in question with his left hand, not letting the barrel of his rifle off the potential threat. That's a rabbit, he said, as sure as hell, a rabbit was lying in the snow just underneath the bush. I grabbed my radio, ready to inform the base that it was nothing, and then Clarence said, Ah, think it's dead. He was poking at it with his foot. The animal was completely unresponsive. I don't think rabbits kill over dead, just like that, I said. Let me have a look. Maybe it's got some injury or something. He kneeled over and inspected the rabbit for a few moments. Doesn't seem injured to me. Can't tell why it's dead, he said. Could be an escape test animal from the complex. With the rush they left it, it could have just escaped, I said. Unlikely. And how do you know what the hell they're doing in there? He said. I don't know. It's just a hunch. After that was said, I informed Base that it was just an animal, but things still seemed a bit too quiet. We left the animal where it was and resumed our patrol. And as we were getting near the end of our patrol shift, the sun slowly started to set. And the atmosphere changed, and we weren't all too chatty anymore. Then, abruptly, Clarence raised his hand in a stop motion. I stopped in my tracks as I started to inspect my surroundings. Wordlessly, he pointed to the bushes once again. When we got there, Clarence once again parted them to find a squirrel. It was dead, not a scratch on it. What the fuck is up with the dead critters? He said. Then he raised his head, alarmed. I couldn't tell why. And then he raised his rifle. What is... Before I could finish my sentence, he started shooting. And I could hear some kind of shriek deeper into the forest. We got contact, Northwest. He was grabbed from something. I could barely react. I raised my rifle as well and started shooting in the general direction of whatever was there. I need backup. Do you copy? Northwest contact. I shouted into my radio as I entered deeper into the forest. My herd shoveling above me and I shot a couple of rounds into the air. Nothing. It was going back towards the complex. I got out of the forest. I tried to find whatever it was. We got a man down. Repeat, we got a man down. I said into my radio once more. I looked around, flinching at even my footsteps. Then, as I returned to the fence, I saw something new. It was an opening, like something ripped a hole right into the fence. God fucking Damn it, I murmured. Someone's entered the complex, hole in the fence. Do you copy? I waited for a moment. Only static was on the other end. I was split. Should I go back to base, or should I go through the fence? I knew Clarence only for a few weeks, but he is the closest thing I could call a friend on this job. And a bearded man extinguished his cigarettes and finished his whiskey open it down at once. And what happened next? I asked, now invested in the story. What happened next? He was fiddling with the glass and tapping his finger. <sighs> All right. Hey, get us another two jacks. I hollered to the barman. It's on me, I added to the bearded guy. Once the whiskey came, he continued. I was split on the decision, as I've said, but in my stupidity and curiosity, I decided to crawl through that hole in the fence. I haven't mentioned, on the other side of the fence, it was a flat and open space and with few buildings, four or five if I recall correctly. 
about four stories high, white in color, with a few windows, looked more like a prison than anything else. Once I crawled through, I felt that I was now even more exposed, but I trudged on despite that. I tried to contact base a couple more times during that time, but to no avail. Just fucking static. I got closer to a building that looked like a hangar. It was between one of the two buildings, and one of the doors was slightly ajar. Well, he paused, as if recalling something. I slowly opened the door, and the moment I moved it, a smell, a putrid smell, Oh, it smelled like someone dropped a dozen corpses into a septic tank and mixed it with garbage. It was abhorrent. I gagged and nearly fucking vomited. I managed to use my scarf to cover my mouth and nose. It still seeped through, but it was a bit more tolerable with it. And I opened the door slowly. It was dark. I remember. Though there was some sort of Artificial light, greenish, but it barely lit up anything. I got my flashlight out and turned it on and... Oh, he seemed to be uncomfortable. I found out why the smell was so bad. A lot of red, dark red. The floor was fucking crimson. In the center of the room, there was some sort of machine. It looked like a drill or something. Everything inside was dead, dismembered. And he paused. Jesus Christ, that's fucked up. Who did it? I asked. At first I thought it was those bricks who escaped with their tails between their legs. But it isn't the question of who did it, but what. And I saw movement in there. I saw a person. Well, what looked like a person. And I was ready to call out then, and the thing turned its head. It was eyeless, hairless, and had large ears. It looked humanoid. It was naked, and quite muscular, if I remember right. And it was smelling around, and its ears were flapping around like that of a dog or horse, and it was making some kind of clicking sound. I figured the thing relied on smell and sound alone. It was quiet inside and I hadn't made too much noise. And the smell inside was probably too strong for it to smell me. And I just backed away, slowly, and as far as I could. Then, something pinged in his pocket. He retrieved the phone, unlocked it, and looked at some message. He squinted, and then I think I heard a faint, God damn it from him. Well, kid, well, it's been nice talking to you, but I gotta go. Thanks for the drink and the ciggy. He got up from the stool and went towards the exit. Hey, wait, what about the rest of the story? I said. He turned around and looked at me with a serious expression. Some things are better left unknown, he said before turning around and exiting the bar. I pondered then about what it said. Was it all made up? Well, it sure sounded like it. But he made it sound genuine. Well, the way he told it at least. But an eyeless man-eater in northern Canada. What do they call those again? Wendigos? Hey man, we're closing up soon. The barman then told me. Uh, yeah. I retrieved my wallet and gave him the money. Uh... This isn't enough, he said. What do you mean? There's three drinks, two for myself and one for that guy who just left. Well, he didn't pay, so I guess you're paying the whole tab for him. W what? I don't even know the guy's name. But y you know what? Here. I gave him the rest of the money. As I exited the bar, now frustrated, the only thing I could think of is that motherfucker. That cheating motherfucker. Wow, 
wow, wow, wow. Short but certainly interesting story. And that was from the incredible mind of MWMN19 over on Reddit No Sleep. Big thank you, M, for allowing me to narrate your story on the show. Certainly a different angle, but nevertheless chilling and enjoyable. Of course, I hope you enjoyed my rendition and look forward to more of your work in the future. Well, guys and girls as ever, you know the drill. Please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. If you're an aspiring writer and would like me to narrate your story on the show, then please, please do get in touch with me at the contact email, which is as on screen. Contact the dead one at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. I hope everyone's had a fantastic week at work or school. But above all, guys, remember, be safe, not sorry.